I didn't want to make this video this morning because for the past day or so I've had this sty on my eye that's just been hurting and I've just not been in the mood to film. I've, I've been itching to record a video but I don't feel the best but regardless I'm tired of just making excuses for not recording videos and not putting content out there so here we go. Either way Regardless of how my face is looking right now and whether my eye is swollen or not, we're filming. So in this video, I want to talk about risk and why you need to stop taking unnecessary risks in order to succeed and get what you want out of life. And I'm making this video because there's so much content out there online right now that encourages you to be reckless with your money and spend on this, invest in this, go all in into that, go all out in this kind of business or, or jump straight into this because it's trending at the moment. But no one is talking about what happens when things don't work out and when things go wrong. And I think it's important that people talk about this stuff. I, I think no one is making a big enough fuss or deal about this that things don't always work out and what you tend to see online is everyone talks about their successes and how things are going well for them and no one likes to talk about their failures and when things haven't worked out and the truth is for the vast majority of people who are in business and are trying to succeed or trying to do something different with their lives one success comes after multiple failures and the only way you can be successful is by learning from those failures and taking what didn't work out and what hasn't gone how it was supposed to go and apply those lessons to make it work out the way you want it to work but without getting too deep into that because that's a whole nother topic for another day i just want to talk about unnecessary risk and why you should stop taking unnecessary financial risks so there's so many things that you can do or invest in or get started in right now. And there's if you go on Google or YouTube and just search how to make money, um, passive income ideas or side hustle ideas, it's, there's so many different things that are going to come up. You could be investing in property. You could be starting an e-commerce business. It could be, it could be like a, a, a new like car detailing or washing or lawn care, whatever you want to get into. There's so many things that you can do. And the truth is, no matter how people who are making guides and content on this stuff will sell it to you, there's no way you can start these things up without an initial investment. And that's a pot of money that you're taking from somewhere, whether that's your pay from your day job or um, savings that you've got. You need money to make money. It takes money to make money. Even if you're just cutting lawns to make money, you need a lawn mower. In fact, you need more than a lawn mower. You need a lawn mower. You need scissors. You need goggles. You need uh, air protection, depending on what equipment you're using. You need a hedge trimmer. And before you know it, the list of gear and equipment you need to run this business effectively starts to add up quite a bit. And on top of that, now, how do you move all this equipment around from, from property to property? Let's say you get one booking um, and based in the UK and London. Let's say you get one booking in East London and another booking in West London. How are you going to get all that equipment from one place to the other? You need a van now or some kind of large car to carry all your equipment, but preferably a van. And you're going to need insurance for that van as well. And if this is something you want to do seriously and you want to protect yourself... You're also going to need insurance for yourself and your business. So that's your public liability insurance or depending on what industry you're in, you might need insurance specific to that trade. And before you know it, you've got a long list of expenses and commitments that you've made every single month just to be able to do this business. So the point I'm getting at is people encourage you to jump in, go all out and do all of this. But no one is talking about what happens when things don't work out because the reality is when things don't work out, that long list of expenses I was just talking about doesn't go away. You've still got that there. You've still got to pay for this fan that you're paying for. You've still got to pay for all the equipment that you purchased. You can't just go and refund all, 
all of it because you've been using it. It belongs to your business now. It belongs to you if you bought it yourself. You can't just back out of this now. You're, you're now fully committed. And if I talk from my own personal experience, there's a lot of different ideas or like businesses or side hustles that I thought, okay, this is a good idea. Let me go and start this and see where this goes. And I've ended up making the mistake of going all out and buying all this equipment, getting started, making all this initial investment and um, paying for all this upfront stuff and in the end it doesn't work out there was a time I started a lawn care business like the one I was just talking about um, a gardening business and I was working off the um, different apps Airtasker, TaskRabbit all of these different apps that were coming in and the way a lot of these businesses will present themselves is that just sign up you'll get all the jobs coming in people will hire you you'll get paid all of this and that and you can use their platform as a way of building and establishing your business well the reality is the fees on those platforms are so high that it takes you doing the job so much or doing so taking on so many jobs and difficult jobs as well and dealing with so many difficult customers before you're actually making any decent money and that's decent money compared to just walking into any random shop and just trying to get a, a job up behind the till so t- in order to make more than like your minimum wage, you have to work extremely hard on these apps or these um, side gig apps or task apps. Unless you build up a massive reputation, you have loads of reviews, that's when you can start to make decent money and start charging slightly more because you've got a good reputation. But at the start, things are beginning. Um, at, the, at the start, things are difficult. So unless you can make things work out pretty much right away, you're going to end up spending a lot more on this equipment and getting started in this business than you're going to make back initially. And if for any reason you need to now pivot, let's say you can't do that business anymore for one reason or the other, maybe it's a, a, an injury, maybe it's an illness, or maybe you've just realised that you've got really severe hay fever like I have, and regardless of how many masks that you wear and how much medication you take, doing gardening over and over again is making you ill and you can't do it every single day because your health is just deteriorating and you're spending all day sneezing. Maybe it's something like that and you realise this isn't for me. How do you now back out of that when you've bought all this equipment? The reason I'm saying all of this is to encourage you to weigh up the pros and cons before just jumping into anything you've seen online that looks like a good idea and then also to figure out how much it's going to cost you. Plan properly. Do an analysis of this business idea that you're getting into after you've tested the waters. Do everything properly before you um, say, I'm going to go all out, I'm going to jump into this, this is going to be my thing. Because if you don't, you may end up with a burden behind you financially that you, you're stuck with things that you don't need. You're stuck with a debt that you can't pay off. You're stuck with expenses that you can't keep up with because you thought that something was going to work because it was sold to you as this idea that was going to be easy to execute and it's not. If things were easy and if business was easy and if starting new ventures was easy, everyone would be doing it. You have to think about why, why is there so much content online about how to get into business? Why is there so much content online about how to make money? It's because these things are difficult. If it was easy, Everyone would be doing it and we wouldn't need to go online and watch videos and read about it. We wouldn't be attracted to videos talking about how to make money because we all know how to make money. If everyone found it easy to make money online or to make money from the side hustle, there would be no interest in this kind of content because it would be so easy to do. So don't get caught up with the lie or the the fallacy that people are selling of This is so easy. All you need to do is invest in this, invest in that, jump into this, jump into that. Because it's not, things are not easy. Life is not easy. You have to do your own research. You have to do your own planning. You have to do your own due diligence. See what's working for other people. See how they got started in that thing. How they were able to build up where they started from, what they did, what money they used to get started. Of course, not not. That information isn't accessible to everyone. But if you can figure out a way someone else was successful and you can copy that blueprint, do that. Don't try and make it out on your own without any idea of how things are going to work. Unless you've got a nice cushion of cash to fall back on. If you're someone like me and 
one wrong decision can be a, can financially impact you and send you into a place where things are difficult because that's most people most people like you and I we don't have huge amounts of cash away in savings that we can just fall back on if something doesn't work when when we go into an idea we go all into that idea so if you're someone like me be careful that's all I can say in this video